as to the um, the weather in itself. Kind of cool. But uh, I ain't going to take too much of your time. Just going to put this out here. Um, you saw my topic. I, uh, my topic was the learned behavior. <laughs> I know, I know, right? I hear you, man. I, I hear you more. I, I hear you more than what you're saying. I, I hear what you're not saying, kind sir. <laughs> I hear what you're not saying. Uh, but like I said, uh, next time, next time, I'm gonna go ahead and get my um, same here in Michigan. Uh, like I said, though, the next time for your trip, I will make sure I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, when I get a chance, I'll get my passport done, uh, and then. When I get a chance, uh, next time I go with you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Tracy. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, trying to get all my ducks in a row. Come on in. Come on in. I ain't going to be long. I ain't going to be long. I'll try not to be long anyway. I don't want to lie. <laughs> uh, today I want to talk about learned behavior. Learned behavior. And what is learned behavior? Learned behavior is an attitude or a mindset uh, that you learn or that you develop. It's basically learned behavior is how you think, feel, and believe. And how you fe think, feel, and believe, where did that come from? That comes from two places. It comes from hearing and it comes from observing. Hearing and observing. And all of us the word was created from word. God said, let it be. God created the word. And we understand that word is seed. Uh, and the thing about it, with the word, see, all of us, we are shaped from sound. And we are shaped from word. Sound and word. Sound and word. Uh, sound. Mother, daddy. Their words. And so what happens, even as soon as we're born... We hear a lot of sounds. We hear a lot of words over and over again, repetitiously. Over and over again. And repetitiously. That's how we learn. We, we, we learn from, we learn from uh, hearing it over and over. We learn. We're creatures of habit. We learn from hearing, 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 doing the same thing over and over again. And so what happens, the more the things that impress us, the more that the people or the words that impress us, uh, that grooms us is the very thing that we become shaped in because based on the words that you are, uh, are around or that you listen to, it's going to shape you. It's going to shape your mind. It's going to shape your heart. And then once it gets your, get to your heart, then it's going to become, you're going to become the exact thing that you hear. Uh, even uh, case in point, the Bible said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's repetition. See, our faith grows from hearing over and over again. And faith is a learned behavior. To have faith in God is a learned behavior because it's something that you learn. It's something that you taught. It's how you groom. It's how you groom. Look at Emily. Emily, she's become a shape uh, from our words and our sounds. And so we do the same thing every day. Every day. Now, I'll tell you what's amazing with Emily. Emily. Emily, she has a favorite program, the Mickey Mouse Club. And with Emily... Emily may not be listening, she may not be watching it at times, but if you turn it off, she'll stop with what she's doing. See, because what Emily will do when she's listening to the Mickey Mouse Club, she could be doing her own thing, playing with her hands, playing with her toys. It's like a rhythm. That sound is a familiar sound. It's a rhythm. It's a rhythm. And the more, and the more she hear that sound, she's able to do whatever she wants to do. She, you know, she play with her toys, she run around, do all her stuff, do the stuff she do, get the love. Her little toy, uh, her little toy cart, and push it around and walk around a little bit. She's comfortable with that. But it's, but the moment that sound is broken or is taken off or that station is taken off, then she stop doing what she's doing. It's rhythm. See, also, uh, sound is rhythm. Sound is rhythm. That's just like when you're singing in a choir. Everybody is in rhythm. Everybody's in rhythm. And the more everybody's in rhythm, the more hum uh, a harmonical sound will take place. And so. What I'm saying is this right here, we have to be careful what we listen to. We have to be careful of what we hear. Because what we listen to and what we hear will shape our opinions. It, it's going it's to teach us how to think. It's going to teach us how to feel. It's going to teach us how to believe. That's why faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But the thing about it, faith 
in itself is not a divine quality. Meaning, you can have fear. If you have faith in fear, then it's going to grow. See, the, the more you hear fear, the more fear is going to grow. The more you listen to it, the more you talk about doubt, the more doubt is going to grow. And so that's why you have to be careful of what you associate with. Because you know what? There's two things. The Bible says in the, I think it's 13th book of Matthews, at vibration, yes sir, vibration. The 13th book of Matthews says that the man planted good seeds, but he went to sleep. But when he went to sleep, meaning that his eyes was closed, he wasn't paying attention, that adversary came in, this old tears. And what are tears? The tears are the total opposite of the wheat. Tears are the bad, the bad stuff. Just like at the, just like the, the, the way Emily's talking, just like at the, uh, the Garden of Eden where God had gave uh, the man and the woman instructions they could eat from all the trees of the field except this one tree, the knowledge of good and evil. Good and evil, good and evil. And so we have to be careful. We have to be careful of what we entertain. Just like with tares, tares is evil. Tares is wicked. And see, a tear looks good. See, it looks good. It looks holy. See, because the Bible said the devil comes as angel light, but in, inside he's a, a, ravering, a, a ravering wolf. In other words, he wants to deceive. Because it's going to be sweet to your lips, but it's going to be bitter to your stomach. You hear me in the back? Yeah, she's watching the program. She's she, she talking to. But, yeah, we have to be careful. We have to be careful of what we listen to because that terror... See, when, when, when that man went to sleep, that terror came in. He, that wicked one planted that terror. And that terror was something bad. And the purpose of that terror being planted, deception, secret. When he went to sleep, that secret. In that secret place. That unknown place. See, oftentimes, if you notice that, if you're in an argument with your loved one, someone, someone you love, oftentimes, automatically, you're going to get quiet. And the moment that you get quiet, your mind going to be in the thing. Then, you know what's going to happen? Uh, the, the prince of the air, the accuser of the brother, going to start talking to you. Words. His words. And see, the thing about the thing you need to understand about words, uh, even in the garden, even when the, uh, the serpent came and talked to the woman, and basically uh, he charmed her. He, um, he uh, beguiled her. Uh, another translation for that word charm is charisma. Also, charisma is um, eloquent speaker, someone who speaks well, someone who knows how to speak a certain way, because when a person is, knows how to become eloquent, eloquent or charismatic, they know how to draw because uh, another word for uh, 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 elegance, another word for char charisma is, uh, is charm. Charm also is uh, favor. In other words, you're able to draw things to you based on how you talk, based on what you say, how you're able to put words together. And see, the thing about it, see, that's where the adversary works. He tried to get inside your head. And what he would try to do, he would use the word to get your attention. And if you can get your attention with that word, then if you entertain and pay attention to it, he's going to sell you his idea. Just like he sold his idea to the woman in the garden. He told her that, can you not eat of all the trees of the field? When she know that God told Adam, the day that you eat of that tree, surely you're going to die. You're going to die surely. And so I'm going to get ready to wrap this up because it could be a long, but what I want to do is learn behavior. I want to talk about learn behavior. One of the most difficult things, one of the most difficult things that we face in this world in this time is communication. Most of us don't know how to talk. Most of us don't know how to talk. You know, how, you know why? Because of a learned behavior. We will learn how to think a certain way. We will learn how to process a certain way. And we will learn how to respond a certain way. God bless you. Good morning, Patrick. See, and so when someone says something that is against your teaching, or when someone says something against how you were raised or how you believe, then that, that, that voice, that learned behavior, that attitude is going to begin to speak. And then what happens is that when that attitude or that learned behavior speaks, whatever that person is saying or doing, you're not going to hear it. And see what the adversary wants to do, he don't want us to become together. He wants us to always stay divided. Because the main, the thing that he told, he went to, the, the thing that he told the man and the woman, what I put together, let no man separate. And from that moment, the adversary has been kind of trying to separate the man and the woman. He's been trying to separate our brother and brother, sister and sister, sister and brother. And his purpose is to deceive. His purpose is to divide us. Because he know if we if we come together, we're powerful. Because the Bible said one could chase a thousand, and two can put ten thousand to fight.
to flight. See, but what he's going to do, he's going to put things in our way, in between us, in our mind, in our upbringing, to get us to clash where we don't agree. And the fact that we don't agree, then it's going to cause uh, a rift. It's going to cause us to become powerless because our power as believers in our agreement. The Bible said if two agree as a touching anything that they ask, it shall be done. But the thing about it, they have to agree. How can two walk together except there be an agreement? That's why I see what the adversary has done. I'm going to tell you what the adversary has done. The adversary here has brought opinions, flesh, and flesh, uh, pride, ideals, all of that that looks good. See, because the Bible says that the, the tradition of men has caused the word of God to become a non-effect. See, the thing about it that you must know and realize that th those of you, I got kicked off, got kicked off. But a lot of stuff that we were raised in church, it was wrong. It wasn't scriptural. It was scriptural. And I understand, I understand why they did and they said what they said to keep us out of trouble. I understand the intent, but it wasn't scriptural. It wasn't scripture. It was against God. You know, just like when I was a kid, one of the reasons I quit sports was because they taught that sporting was a sin to play sports. No, it's not a sin. It's not a sin at all. Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto God. If you're doing it as unto God, it's not a sin at all. It's not a sin at all. It's not a sin at all. And so what happened is that laws, rules, and beliefs have crept into the church. And what's happening, and opinions have crept into the church. And what's happening is that people are becoming confused. And because people have become confused, many people stand away. And many people are not being delivered. Because what's happened is that the Bible says to be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. See, but what's happening is that when I talked about those weakness there, see, the adversary has also put people or, or uh, 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 men and women on assignment who are disguised as angel, angels of light in the church to teach you, to teach you God's word from their spirit, to teach you God's word from their spirit. But the Bible says in the last days that there would be false prophets in the land that would deceive many. But also the Bible said that there will be false apostles in the land in the last days. And their purpose and the Bible says that they're, they're, they're called uh, deceitful workers, workers of deceit. In other words, they have a plot and they have a plan. And their purpose is selfish. Their purpose is their own gain. Their purpose is not to help you, but it's to help them. It's just like the rich fool. The rich fool, yeah, Pastor, I got cut off. This, this, this Facebook thing, I got cut off, but I'm back. But I'm talking about, I'm talking about deception. And what happened is that the adversary has planted in the church. Has planted in the church uh, false prophets and false apostles. And the, and the Bible said they, they, their purpose is to deceive many. Also, the Bible says that they're, they're workers of deceit, deceitful workers. And their purpose is to bring confusion because a lot of them are bringing their opinion. A lot of them are bringing their laws and their views. And what's happening is bringing confusion. It's making confusion in the church, in the household of faith, which means that people are not being delivered. Because the word of God is being mixed with flesh. Not faith, but flesh. The word can only be mixed with faith. Because faith comes from God. Because God gives every man the measure of faith. And what causes your faith to grow? What causes your faith to grow? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And see, the thing about faith, if you, I can look at faith, faith could be like, if I can look at it, faith can be like a balloon. A balloon. And the more you hear that word, that balloon will swell and grow and grow and grow. Expand, expand, expand. And see what happens is that the more you hear God's word, you're going to grow, you're going to grow, you're going to grow, you're going to expand, you're going to expand, you're going to expand. But now, but now with the word now, but when it comes to the word is seed. And you know the actor said he's a deceiver and he's the accuser. And if you remember, Jesus said, take heed how you hear. Because you have to be careful how you hear, but you have to be careful how you process. Because how you process a thing will determine what gets in your heart. Because the Bible says, it's not what goes in a man that defiles him, but it's what comes out him, wherein he becomes defiled. In other words, God is, God, God is judging you based on what comes out your mouth. It's not what somebody does to you, but it's what, how you respond. See, because there are two things. There's a response and a reaction. There's a response 
and a reaction. Now, when a person becomes hit, emotional, emotional, see, the adversary, he wants to work on your emotion. That's why he wants to get inside of your head. Because if he can get inside of your head and sell his idea to you and you, and you digest it, what it's going to do is going to swell you up. It's going to swell your flesh up. It's going to swell your emotion up. Which means that based on learned behavior, based on when something comes at you that you don't like, you're going to swell up. You are going to swell up. And see, that's the purpose of the adversary. He's a rival. He's trying to rival with God. He wants you to swell up at wisdom. He wants to swell up at things that are right. And see, the reason why I'm saying this is this right here. What we need to learn how to do is not to react from my emotions. Don't react. But what God wants us to do is to think. When things come at us, when people come at us, when circumstances come at us, God wants us to think. He don't want us to react, but he wants us to think. Think about the consequences. I oftentimes, I always tell my son, that's Daniel, think. When somebody gets you upset, when somebody makes you angry, think, don't respond, don't respond. See, because when you respond without thinking, you're weak. Because if a person knows that you're an emotional mess, and they know that they can say certain things to you, and get you upset, and they can say certain things to you, and ruffle your feathers, and, and get you to lose your testimony, and get you to respond in flesh, and just speak your mind, they got you. You become like a puppet master. All they got to do is say certain things, and they get you to go off. <laughs> you know, they get you to go off. And so we got to be wiser than that. And see, that's what the devil does. The devil, he knows your body language because what he do, he'll throw stuff out there. And if you respond to it and go all crazy and act all crazy, he, oh, I got him. Oh, they acting holy. They looking holy. They, they, you know, they, they screaming and yelling in church. But after church, I'm waiting on that church because I'm gonna bring that situation to them uh, that 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 I, I presented to them before they went to church. And so the devil's always waiting on you. He's always wait, He's always lurking, and his purpose is to deceive. He's gonna come as angel light. But what he wants to do, he don't want us to become unified. But so what he'll do, he'll keep us divided. That's why we have so many denominations. There's not a denomination in heaven. There's not, there's not, there's not, there's not an Italian church, there's not an African American church, there's not a Caucasian church, there's not a, uh, 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 what else, um, Mexican, Hispanic church. No, there's one church, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And so I'm going to close, but all I want you to do, uh, in our, what I want you to do is to think. Don't, we, don't, don't, we, don't react, but respond. Because when you respond, you're going to think about it. You're going to think about the consequences. You're going to think about what's going on. And so what God needs to do, if you're a person who's emotional, if you're emotional at everything and you don't listen, because when even in the conversation, your mind talks more. When a person talks to you, which means that your understanding is unfruitful and you react to everything and everybody and you feel like you're right all the time and you feel like you're justified in your own ways and you can't see it no other way. Let me talk to you. Let God help you. Because God wants to change your belief. And God wants to change your mindset. Because you know what? You're, you were head, you're heading for destruction if you don't learn how to think. If you don't learn how to stop reacting to everything. But learn how to respond. Because if when you learn how to respond, instead of, being, instead of falling after something, you'll make things fall after you. In other words, don't follow the trend. Make the trend. That's, that's by having authority. God wants you to have authority over your mouth. God wants you to have authority over your heart. God wants you to have authority over your words, over the adversary. The Bible said God said he gave us dominion. That means authority, rule. God wants you to teach you and learn how to rule your emotions, to rule your mind. Because the Bible said a man, a person who's able to control their spirit is stronger than, than hundred mighty men. That's why the Bible, that's why God gives us temperance. He wants to have temperance. Temperance means self-control. Control yourself. When things hit you, control yourself. When things don't go your way, control yourself. Temperance. And see, the thing about it, when a person is an emotional person, they're going to become emotional in every part of their life. If you, if you watch it, if you watch them, if you watch them. Because, you know, it's not just one thing that they're emotionally in. It's going to become everything. It's a behavior. That's like if a person is emotional, just uh, hot-headed, they're going to overeat. When things don't go the way they overeat, that's going to be their coping mechanism. And so it's a learned behavior. And so what God wants you to do is to think and respond. Don't react. D respond. Don't react. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Learn behavior. Be careful. Be careful what you associate with.
Be careful of who you listen to. Because if you associate and you listen to it, what you're doing, you're learning a behavior. You're learning their behavior. Because the, 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 there's an old saying, birds of a feather flock together. They do. Birds of a feather, they will flock together. What you associate with, you become that. That's why God tells us to abstain. What fellowship does light have with darkness? That's right. Self-control is a fruit of the spirit. Control yourself. Self-control. That means not to, not to react but respond. Jesus tried to teach uh, his disciples in the Beatitudes how to respond. Blessed are they that thirst and hunger after righteousness. Blessed are they uh, when, when someone smites you on the cheek, turn another cheek. Uh, when you uh, bless your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good for them that despitefully use you. Because the thing about it, it's not about you. Because they're going to get what they're going to get. It's not you. You ain't God. You can't control what's going to happen. But God can. And what, what, what will happen based on your fruit. Based on your fruit. Based on your fruit will determine your result. That's why you have to be careful what comes out your mouth. Because what comes out your mouth is going to be identified and you're going to have to give an account for it. That's a seed. Your words are seeds. So be careful of the seed that you listen to. Because if you listen to seed of gossip, if you listen to the seed of wickedness, then that seed is going to come out of you. But if you listen to the seed of love, the seed of joy, and the seed of peace, then peace will come out of you. I'm done. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Y'all have a good day. God bless you. Thank you for your support. God bless you. Thank you, Apostle. Man of God. God bless you, sir.